Here is the second flight of Starship. And in the words of Metallica, give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire, which is exactly what we got on Saturday, November 18th. But how did the launch pad hold up with all of this power? Well, after the 420 launch, Elon Musk and SpaceX learned their lesson and they did a complete overhaul of stage zero. For the integrated flight test number two, they were able to test out their water-based sound suppression system. All of the changes that they've made from April until November made a huge difference, and after Saturday's liftoff, the pad was largely unscathed. With that being said, I drove back to Starbase after the launch to see what the damage was, or if there was any damage at all. Just a reminder that this video was filmed four hours after the launch of Starship and shortly after the road reopened. So it's only been four hours since the second flight of Starship and we already are back out here. The road is open again. This is unprecedented and we're going to take a trip behind the dunes here to see what the OLM looks like from the backside. But you can see pretty good from this view and it says a lot that the road is already reopened. So it's a really good sign that the water cooled steel plate and all of the other improvements actually held up. So a very different outcome than the first launch. We have people already, uh, I'm surprised it's not even more busy right now. Maybe people don't know that the road is open, but we are going to go around the backside of the dunes and see what stage zero looks like from the ground. Uh, here is just a look for you right here. I mean, holy crap. So here we are, there's a survey marker stick right there. That might be old looks pretty old but look at all of this uh stuff that's blown around we are following the trail to the back side of stage zero here but you can even see it from this view and it does not look too bad considering they just launched the world's largest rocket about four hours ago so during the launch it truly is a small world down at starbase so after interviewing dr proctor at margaritaville i happened to spot her again behind the orbital launch mount to get her opinion yeah you know it's hard to believe that the largest rocket ever built launched from here just a few hours ago and here i mean we're just walking out here checking it out everything looks amazing and uh, ready to go for the next launch. Can you can you tell me about your experience, um, sir, today? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'm actually out here uh, scavenging because some people are uh, finding some things. So as you can see, I mean, after the first launch, this thing was a concrete jungle, concrete massacre. So um, it's looking a lot better. You guys asked if I could get any closer. This should say no trespassing, but uh, you know, I don't see any sign now. I'm not gonna go any closer, but I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I can. But again, this is a first look at stage zero. We are just about four hours after the launch of Starship. And you can see workers crouched down low doing some inspection of the water cool sealed plate. Water cooled steel plate, excuse me. But just to give you a scale, here's all the way zoomed out. This makes it look smaller than it is, but I can assure you, if you look at the size of those folks on the ground, you will just see how big it is. But let's just take a, take a quick look at the pad. So much better than launch number one. I mean, it's crazy that they're even letting us back here. It's reopened in such a short time frame. So that's a really great sign. And I'm so happy that they're already out here able to inspect the work. And hopefully we can have a much sooner Starship number three. And hey, who knows, maybe third time is a charm. Elon Musk confirmed the very next day that the Starship launch pad had been inspected as we were seeing from the ground and it is in fact in great condition. He says no refurbishment is needed to the water-cooled steel plate for the next launch, and he congratulated the SpaceX team and contractors for engineering and building such a robust system so rapidly. And I'm just gonna show you guys as well what it looks like out here, because last time you remember so many chunks of concrete and fondag were out here, and it looks pretty barren. 
Uh, it looks like, you know, pretty, pretty good compared to, compared to the first launch. So um, congratulations to SpaceX and uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this up close. So launch was less than five hours ago and we're back here so suddenly. What do you think? Uh, it's incredible actually. So I've never imagined, so I came from Florida, so I never imagined seeing Starship up close so far, uh, so recently. And also I love the fact that we get to walk around the pad right after the launch and see everything that's going on. Right, um, absolutely. Yeah. So you came from Florida. Is this your first time to Starbase? Uh, second time to Starbase. I came back in October when I came for the eclipse. I just decided, I went to San Antonio for the eclipse and I decided, I'm like, ah, it's a mini road trip to Starbase to check it out. Wow, and you must be glad you did. Oh yeah. What do you think about, so I'm sure you followed launch number one back in April. Yeah. So, I mean, what a success and what a different story we have out here today. Oh yeah. It's what definitely a better, uh, impressive as hell, the fact that we're, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, yes it is. Yeah. It's impressive as hell. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive that, you know, they actually managed to make stage separation. I was very skeptical about the whole hot staging thing, considering I've looked at all the Titan videos of every time they do hot staging, they blow up the inner stage every single time. So I'm like, hmm, I was very hesitant about it, but I'm glad that it worked out, you know. Right. And are you surprised to see just how well the pad held, held up or not surprised? I'm not surprised after the water deluge they did and everything. Um, Surprised they didn't need the flame trench. So, I mean, the flame diverter, but we'll see. We'll see what happens next time. Absolutely. You think mm. he'll come back again? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, it depends. It was an expensive flight last minute to come here, but. Absolutely. It was mm. worth it though. Oh yeah, totally worth it. So we are back out here just five hours after launch. Unbelievable. What are your thoughts looking at it from the ground? Well, it's uh, got a lot less debris all over the place. Although there's some lighter debris, you know, thin metal, uh, insulation, uh, some panels that, that has been blown around. Uh, some of the uh, private property signs got knocked down, but overall significantly better. Uh, as you can see behind me, they're doing inspections of the uh, water deluge plate right now and uh, probably trying to evaluate just how well it survived and what did it do. But you can also maybe here behind me, there's some venting going on. So they have control over the take bar, which is uh, another great sign. Uh, you can see that the uh, arms on the tower have been brought down and they're open right near the over the launch mount. And that's a big change. The, the first launch, they actually lost some of the power and connections out here. And, and they left them up for quite some time while they did the inspection. So the fact that they've already brought it down is a, another great sign as well. It allows people to come out to the beach because it still is a public beach. Um, I think also it, it helps inspire confidence too that they can launch and then people can come right back out, which is great. Yeah, huge change from April. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other changes uh, from the ground here that you see? I, I am just shocked actually, yeah. really. The, maybe the biggest thing, maybe you can see behind me on the, the ground, there's some water. Obviously that's from the water deluge system, but it's not nearly as much as I think people expected. Uh, the majority of it most likely flashed to steam during the actual launch. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it's really not, uh, not that bad at all. The impact here is, uh, it looks pretty minimal to me. So do you think that Starship th uh, launch number three could be sooner than, you know, obviously this one was? Uh, it could be. Uh, there's already an FAA uh, investigation going on, which is normal and standard whenever you have uh, a rocket launch that doesn't achieve all of its uh, uh, planned objectives. And, and this one uh, meant a lot, but obviously it didn't meet all of them. So uh, that's underway. So that'll have to proceed. The way that works is the FAA works in conjunction with SpaceX. SpaceX will do most of the investigation. They'll provide the data. They will uh, come up with what the mitigations would be and provide it to the FAA, and then that would be evaluated and moving forward. Um, the, the really good thing uh, that I see out here is, you know, there was a lot of worry about the Fish and Wildlife Service looking at the environmental, what would happen. Um, it looks like it really did well, so that should not be uh, an impediment to that. If you haven't already taken a picture like this one, unfortunately, you won't be able to if you go to Starbase. We learned recently that SpaceX has closed off access to the Rocket Garden. Previously, the road was open because there were two plots of land at the end of Remedios Road that belonged to other people. That land has now been sold to SpaceX and SpaceX now has cordoned off that area of Starbase. And it's not the only area that we're seeing of Starbase being blocked off or having a fence put up around. One of the changes that is now happening here at Starbase, 
that relates to the increase of production capacity, but also reducing that access that we've uh, seen in the past is this wall that they are building behind me. And uh, it's gonna be quite tall when it's done. I'm not sure the exact height, but it may be about eight to 10 meters tall uh, from what I'm being told. Maybe not quite that high, but it will definitely restrict the amount of views and access that you have of this part of the orbital launch site once it's completed. I've said it before and I'll say it again, make a trip down to Starbase if you haven't already. We're already seeing some of that access right alongside Highway 4 being restricted. This isn't to say that the road will close because there is a public beach at the end of the road, but some of these unforgettable views that we have now are starting to become obstructed and it won't be as accessible as it has been in the past. So if you haven't been there, try and make a trip. Even if there's not a launch going on, I still think it's well worth your time. And the final piece of information, Elon Musk also posted the day after the launch that Starship Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. There are three ships in final production in the high bay as can be seen from the highway. So this is great news. I'm thinking that they will want to make the push to have another Starship flight before the end of the year so that they can have the maximum amount of flights next year. I know that next year will probably be insane down at Starbase and we're hearing that from some people that work at SpaceX. So let me know in the comments if you think that they'll be able to pull off another Starship launch by December. I think that technically they will be ready. The pad is looking good and like Elon on saying there are three ships in final production in the high bay. However, it's a matter of getting a new FAA license and approval to fly again. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my coverage here on Ellie in Space. If you like this content, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's completely free. And if you want to go one step further, please consider signing up for my Patreon. And it really helps because this is my full-time job, so I could really use the support to keep creating great content for you at home.